let's talk playoff. And well, I kind of think this is where you were going because a lot of discussion in the Discord, there's a lot of discussion across college football that there's just this SEC bias. And I, I wanted to kick it off with this. You know, tomorrow night we're going to see these rankings come out. I've lost faith in the AP poll. I don't know what it means. I mean, I, 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 all this stuff. But I wanted to kind of state my opinion on tonight's show because I was it's, it's hard to do that over text in terms of the Discord. I think there can be two things true at once. I, I believe the SEC is far and away the deepest and most competitive conference in college football. I think that there's select teams in other conference that are very, very, that are also very good. Um, I also think that strength of schedule and who you have played should matter. I have a problem with Texas being as high as they have due to, you know, who they have played and who they've beaten. I mean, their best wins Vanderbilt at this point. They ain't played nobody, Paul. I also have a problem with Vander Penn State being in the conversation for we don't even know why they're in the conversation other than the logo on the the lack of a logo on a helmet. Uh, Indiana, it's a cool story, but just because you're a cool story doesn't mean that you know you should be above said teams. I think we we're entering a time, and you know, we had some people in the Discord, and I didn't even fully disagree with them. The expansion of the playoff is what has caused this, and, and this is one of the reasons. I will tell you this: when December twenty first comes around, and I want to take this pin and jab it through Palmer Tom's neck because he gets to make a trip to Happy Valley, and I don't. When that happens. We're all going to sit on the TV, sit in front of the TV and watch like that. that, Let's get that out of the way. We're all going to watch. Well, Ralph won't because he's working, but you know, we'll all sit down and we'll watch it. But the thing for me is, is you have to realize the 12 team playoff ruined this in terms of what else did you expect? Everyone catered to wanting the G five to get a team in and wanting that Penn state that though they were almost good enough, but they never could quite do it to get in. But did you not really think that this was going to open the door for the tier two SEC teams to load up? What do you think is going to happen when they get to 16 teams? This is what this is. And the SEC and the Big Ten hold all the power in what you want to do. It's why we said from the beginning, I expect an eventual breakaway or an eventual just, you can do what you're going to do, but we're not participating in the Super League. And without us, you really don't have a Super League type of conversation. So this is what this has caused. The SEC, it, to me, in my opinion, is far away the best conference, not because of logo, but because of a different caliber of athlete, the buy-in in turn to what you talked about, all these different things that make it more competitive week in to week out. When this playoff rankings is released, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, there's going to be a two-loss SEC team that is going to be left out, not just now, but when the p- final playoff rankings are released. We have... We have... Uh, Ralph, give me a word that goes with fire. I know you're so much into arson. What what would be, uh, what would be a word? We've incited. Let's uh, we'll go with that. We've it's become incendiary. Like in terms of this is about to blow up. We we we've, we've blown out of proportion. This whole idea that well, it's going to be the twelve most deserving teams, based off of what? But, but like like what what is the groundwork based off of? And people brought up great, great points, like go back to computers. People brought up, brought, brought up great points that, you know, you could do this and that. My take is, is that if you want the 12 best teams, you might not like it, but there's going to be four, maybe five SEC teams in this thing. That You not liking it doesn't make it not true. And that's just where we sit at that. I, I mean, I don't know how else to paint this picture for people other than the fact of like, and, and I'm not also trying to pull the card of like, well, you're not on the games. You're not on the sideline. You can't see the athletes. I do get that opportunity and I'm thankful for that opportunity. There is a difference. There just is a difference when you watch these games. It's a different, if you believe that watching Virginia and Boston college play is the same. And I'll even give you one is the same as watching Kentucky play Florida. I mean, it's just not like it's it's not the same thing. So it's hard to compare all these things. I will agree with that. So that's that's a lot of different thoughts. Y'all can take it where you want to go from here. Bryce, I got a I got a good example for you, and nobody's gonna want to hear this, but I saw it firsthand in Mercedes Benz Stadium. The athletes that Notre Dame has compared to Georgia Tech and the rest of the ACC. It's it's just far different. It's just far different, yeah. and you know and. The thing is about the SEC and the Big Ten, and this is 
getting to the point that I was wanting to, that I, uh, hinted at earlier. Sorry, I, Ralph, that I know you not, you were concerned. You were concerned <laughs> at me trying to spit that out. Um, they are trying to get as many teams in the playoff as possible. And, yeah. you know, I'm not not to say that's a bad thing. Uh, it's good for business. But you look at these other these other conferences, they have to push all the chips in on one team. Yeah. I mean, look at look at the officiating in the games for Miami. The Cal game, the Virginia Tech game. Yeah. Uh, the Louisville game had some questionable calls in the second half as they they got into a shootout there. Um they had to push all their chips in on one team because they may they probably will only get one team in the playoff. Uh, the Big Twelve, same way, has to do that. Has to do that too. Um, and and my point earlier, the the Georgia Tennessee game, they flashed a graphic before the game that told me exactly how the game was going to be officiated. They showed both teams' percentage to make the playoff with a win and with a loss. Tennessee with a loss, they still gave them about, I think it was a 53% chance to make the playoff. Georgia with a 12% chance. Now, if you watch that game, there was, to me, a, a clear tilt in, in how the game was officiated. Now, not to say that that's why Tennessee lost the game. Mm -hmm. I don't think that, Bryce. We thought we were texting about that today. Yeah. I don't think that's why Tennessee lost the game. It plays uh, it back. Georgia, Georgia flat outplayed them in the second half. I mean, you you have to admit that too. Now Georgia did get a lot of the calls, which which helped them extend drives, put up points, and hurt Tennessee. But but it's it's like I said about if you want to make your team, if you want to make the playoffs, just play better, win your games. The great teams can overcome that kind of stuff, and I think Tennessee is a great team. I think they are a playoff team, and I think that they would have been they are good enough maybe on a different night to overcome that those calls that don't go their way. Um, but the SEC is doing what's best for the SEC and trying to get as many teams in as possible. They say if Georgia wins, we, we might can get both of these teams in. Tennessee wins, we may only get Tennessee, and that's going to cost us another team. Um, but these other conferences, they, they don't have that luxury. Your ACC, your Big 12 – uh, your group of five conferences. Don't the Big Twelve is only getting one in. I mean, that's right. That's they're, what I'm saying. Getting one, in. yeah, and probably it's, the ACC too. Probably. Um, Maxwell says so. CFP playoffs is WWE confirmed. I mean, we've said that for several years. It's ridiculous. It's, it's whatever ESPN wants. And uh, last thing, and then I'll uh, hand it off to Ralph. Uh, you, Bryce, you talk about bringing back computers. We might as well. Because I don't, and Kirby Smart said it after the game, I don't know if the committee watches any of these games. To me, I, it, it looks to me like they just look at box scores and say, well, that's Georgia. We know how good they've been lately, so let's rank them here. Let's rank them. And I think it was the AP poll. They probably do the same thing. They had Georgia ranked ahead of Ole Miss. Ole yeah. Miss just beat Georgia by, by two touchdowns. Double digits. Double yeah. digits. I mean – it's it it's very it is very subjective. That was a word that was thrown around in the Discord a lot today. Uh, it is it is ranking rankings are objective, and you know that's part of it. But you know if they watch the games or if they have a clear criteria, which was Kirby Smart's whole argument, um, we need clear criteria. I want to bring up Sam Kim's comment. Look at the committee members, coaches, and players. It's not an easy job. It's not an easy job, but look who's on the committee. You've got sitting athletic directors from different conferences. There's a yeah. lot of it. There, there's just a lot of inherent biases um, all over the place. Officiating, playoff committee. There's biases everywhere. You can't get rid of them. And that's why I say to make the playoff is pretty simple. I said it in the Discord. Win all your games. It's hard to do, but if you win all your games, they're they're unless you're Florida State. Uh, they're probably not going to leave you out. Yeah, Ralph, I want to. I want you to follow up on this, but I also wanted to throw in this question because we'll hit on something there about Ole Miss. Okay, you know, Ole Miss beats Georgia. They do what they need to do. They do what everyone asked them to do. They do what they had to do to to stay alive in the playoff race. At what point do we just flat out say what is the criteria? Is it 
wins? Is it how you looked, you know, recency bias? Like how you recently looked? Is it who would be favored? I mean, I just don't think that there's I, I agree with Kirby Smart. I have no clue what the criteria is. And I know they keep coming out with some graphic every single year that tells us, but it doesn't feel like it adheres to anything because, like Will said, I mean, if if Georgia's ranked above Ole Miss tomorrow, what was the point of Ole Miss playing Georgia? Like, like what was the point of that? So I don't know, to your point, Ralph, like, I mean, what is this? I know that's a loaded question, and I know you don't have the answer, but like, <laughs> where do you draw the line and just say Either wins matter or they don't, but also you have to understand that not every single win is weighed equally. That's that's another big thing. The SEC and not all losses are either. A law you can't just say, well, they lost to so and so. Well, they lost to the number one two team in the country. You know, they lost to the number three team in the country. So you, while the, be, so-and-so the best example for that is Ole Miss right now. They lost to Kentucky, yes. They lost to LSC on the road, yes. They beat Georgia. Maybe Georgia, and then, and that's that's part of the criteria for Ole Miss right now is that they have a, a win against Georgia. They beat they, they they don't play Tennessee this year. Beat South Carolina on the road, but they beat the brakes off the team that beat Tennessee on the road. They beat the brakes off South Carolina on the road. Ole Miss has done everything they possibly could besides win the two losses the two, the two losses they have to make the playoffs. Um, to answer your about your criteria though, the best example is for Florida State last year. Because look, undefeated ACC champs, they lose their quarterback in a in a horrible injury. Uh, two games left in the left in the season, they they pull out an undefeated season and they get knocked out of the playoffs because they don't have a quarterback. Yeah, that's part of the criteria apparently. And, and in the rules, and you read it, I don't know if that was there beforehand. If they added it right when Florida State didn't get in, get in. I, don't know. I, I can tell you right now, there's not a single person that watches this show that watches the Indian college football that read through every single college football playoff rule and said that was there from the get go. The impact players have to be playing that game. There's no way you knew you knew that that was thrown in there because of Florida State not having uh, their quarterback in this in, in toward the end of the year, and I yeah. hate it. Because and Dr. Bob brings a good comment, Bryce, is that uh, Oklahoma did beat Tulane early year. Tulane had a struggle in the first half, made an insane comeback in the second half, and just could not hold and just could not get, uh, get close enough to win that game. Does not mean Tulane is a bad team. Oklahoma's had a rough year. Tulane is very good. They are very well coached. They Dr. Bob. beat the crap out of Navy over the weekend. Yeah. Dr. Bob, very they confident. Went to Navy very, and beat the already, already crowning Tulane. Very confident. Well, we're going to talk D5 here in the just, in just a second because I don't want to get to that. But overall, against he's three and as a head coach against military teams. Just saying. He's, he's the ultimate military. And he's played Army. He's, he's coached he's against Army twice. Mm, hey, uh, and, and Army's going to beat Notre Dame in Yankee Stadium on Saturday. I, I hope so. I hope I surely hope so. We, we can get rid of this Notre Dame. Talk. Army, Army plays Notre Dame on Saturday. I in Auburn is going to beat Notre Dame. I was like, what? what no, hell? Navy or Army? Army. <laughs> that would so be okay. More fun to watch. I want to talk G five here, but I want to get to this last point right here. Everything that we laid out, I feel is true. The problem with what every, where everything man can we just dream, Doctor Bob. A man can dream. The problem with what we just said here is that there's people who are like. Why, when other conferences struggle or beat up on each other, do they not get the same love that the SEC gets? Well, here, here's the thing. Did you see what I showed you about 30 minutes ago in that environment? Did, do you see the caliber of athlete that is playing in this conference? Look at recruiting rankings. Do you see the amount of draft picks that come out of this conference? Even some of the worst teams are producing – I'm not going to sit, like I said, to start this segment off, I'm not sitting here telling you that Mississippi State would go beat Ohio State. That's asinine. That's crazy. <laughs> that's full SEC homerism. But when Virginia struggles to beat Boston College, it doesn't look the same when Mississippi State and Auburn play each other. And we can make jokes about it. It's a uh, different level. It's I'm a gonna different use, level. I'm going to use an ACC team. None of the ones we we talk about normally, but you mentioned it a minute ago. Virginia, Virginia is sitting at five and five right now. If they played a home game against Virginia Tech on Saturday, it would not be the same crowd. Florida hosting Florida State 
on a Saturday night. If you put both those games on a Saturday night, they will not have the same amount of crowd. They will not have the same amount. It would not be as it, – it would not be even close to the same environment that Florida would have. And I'm just but, using those two ranges because Florida, Virginia's the same record right now at five and five. I can go to the Big Twelve. He's the same same thing. Uh, the only team in the Big nobody, Twelve. Nobody, nobody would even know Virginia, Virginia Tech are playing. It'll be on the ACC. The network. only team in the Big Twelve, in my yeah. opinion, that have a a chance of ho- hosting a good environment year in year out, no matter what record, is BYU. Yeah, but that's because it's so. It, you realize that? Understand that's is because it's so unique. Yeah, that's, that's the why. only reason why. That's, that's why. the only reason why. That's what I'm trying and, to say. And, that. And, and people can keep saying, well, this and that. It's because you don't like it. And you not liking something doesn't make it not true. And I, I will, I'm Reality. serious. I have yet to see – I've yet to see a actual argument against it. Like I, I, an actual argument against it. Because like when Louisville – when Miami lo- – here's a perfect example. When Miami – Miami's loss to Georgia Tech is going to keep them out of the playoff if they don't win the ACC title. And I'm still standing here that you could have a three-loss SEC runner-up that could make it. And people say, well, why, why? Because Georgia Tech is not viewed as a legitimate – threat as in terms of environment in terms of all that it doesn't matter if you were there it doesn't it is the perception and oftentimes perception is reality and that is what has happened in college football you may not like it that's just the way it is it's it's just viewed that way and i will end it by saying this we'll talk g5 here to round it out it doesn't mean that myself and i can't speak for these two guys that we like it it's what's been created in college football because I do think that other teams and other – like I do think other teams should get some grace, not to the extent that maybe the SEC gets because I do believe the SEC is harder, but it does feel like that there's teams outside of the SEC that have to go perfect to get there. And I don't know. that That's just kind of my uh, – that's that that's that's my that's my viewpoint on it. I want to speak for you all, but I did want to talk G5 here. Let's just get to it. Um a lot of talk because Boise State almost lost, and so there's a lot of talk where people are actually looking at that almost. schedule. Almost, they beat they won by three touchdowns. Well, I mean they were they were trailing like that. Like I mean, yeah, they pulled away late, but this you was just they were last when they almost lost. They almost lost the bottom by they won by touchdown. You know what they, proves my point? I'd rather watch Mercer play Alabama than watch Boise State play a full football game. That's and, and no, that, watch that's the extra fun. Well, you know, that's, watch. that's because that's because you don't respect the running game. You don't respect the game <sighs> the way it was designed by God to be played. You don't believe in a fullback. You're going to learn about fullback, trust me. You're going to learn fullback, son. Notre Dame's no, going to learn good. fullback on Saturday. Let's 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 get here. It was a uh, honestly, I watched a little bit of the game, Bryce. It was a fun matchup because Watching uh, the number one running back and number one wide receiver go at it, the whole game was fun to watch, and in, includes the stat wise. Uh, Nick Nash leads the country in receiving yards, and Ashton Jensen leads the country in rece- rushing yards. It was a fun game to watch. Will, what is the freshman wide receiver, Simmons? What's his name? Malcolm, Malcolm Simmons. Simmons. He'd be the number one wide receiver in the Mountain West, Ralph. Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying you're hey, wrong. I'm, I'm saying by stat wise. I get it. I mean, it's but I'm saying it's not created equally. That that's no, I mean, to not go. It was, it, we're say, equal. You, <laughs> just, I'm just it, going it's not stats. an equal playing field. So we're, you're trying to compare teams that are not on an equal playing field to begin with, which leads to the biases. And people think that the equal playing field's made up. It's not. It's fact and reality in terms of quality of athlete, in terms of what you're producing to the next level, and in terms of what's happening on the field and when you play outside of your conference. That's what's happening. And I will say this too, bowl games are not an accurate representation of who is the better conference. Teams like to do that because they want to beat up on the SEC so bad. That's not what that is. Because I can guarantee you when LSU loses to Boston College in a bowl game this week, it's not because Boston College is the better team. Okay. It shouldn't have been it's Thomas Castellanos, that's why. Well, he's gone. He's out of there. All right, let's 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 get this too because Dr. Bob brings this, and I want to end it with this. We're running out of time. Tulane right now is a better team than Boise State. Those Big 12 refs in the K-State game could end up costing us a playoff berth. I would rather – okay, Tulane has two losses, and it's it's going to be the same conversation. They've lost to two power four teams, Oklahoma, Kansas State. I want your, you guys just to straight up say here, are you taking – if Tulane wins the American Conference, and heck, if Ar, will if Army wins it and they go undefeated, who gets in? 
let's let's play that scenario. That's, there's a Mountain West champ, a one a one loss Mountain West champ. Their only loss is to the number one team in the country in Boise State. There's an undefeated Army with a win against Notre Dame, who's a perceived playoff team currently. And then there's Tulane, who has two Power Four losses, but is arguably one of the hottest teams in college football right now in what they're able to do. And they're eleven and two because they'll have won the AAC title. So, Will, you start first. Which which of those three teams are you picking? And I know you want to pick two of them, but which of which one would you pick to put in the playoff? I don't know why you're asking me. You know the answer, Army. But realistically, I mean, based Army. off of resume, you take an Army. Army, going the Army. They did win all their games. They won all their games. Like you said, they beat Notre Dame, who's a playoff team. Um, they'll have beat and, Navy, but even though it won't count or matter. Yeah, they'll they'll have beat Navy, and like. You have to watch the teams play. That's why they're ranked so low because because people that are making these polls haven't watched them. They Army is dominant in a lot of the games they played. I know they're not playing SEC or Big Ten teams every week, but but they dominate. They've got one of the best quarterbacks in the country, but nobody wants to admit it because he runs an option offense, Bryson Daly. They 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 are suffocating dominant defense. They win in different ways. They can outscore you, or they can make it ugly and and play defense like they did they did against North Texas. And part of that was because they had a sixteen play drive, held the ball for ten minutes and on one drive. But they yeah. do it in different ways. And to me, they're they're a complete team. They can make it ugly. Doctor Bob says he doesn't see Army hanging with Notre Dame. If Army can make it ugly, which they're certainly capable of doing, that's how they want to play their games. They can beat them. And, you know, to me, a playoff team has to, is a team that's got to prove they can win in different ways. Yeah. That's why there's so many SEC teams in there. That's why so many, there's multiple Big Ten teams in there because they get drugged down into these ugly games by teams that don't have the depth that they do that maybe aren't as good as them but make it competitive and make it ugly and have to win in different ways. Ralph? I'm going to go to Lane Bryce. And the reason why I'm telling you this is talk about you said a minute ago, they're the hottest team right now. The last three games is it at Charlotte, home against Temple, and at Navy. They are they have outscored their team opponents 121 to nine. Uh, that is allowing three to Charlotte, six to Temple, and zero to Navy. You play Memphis at home uh, on the 28th, 7 30 Eastern. Uh, on Thanksgiving night. On Thanksgiving night, they will complete the they will complete the season. They will go in the American Championship. They will play Army more than likely. And they no, will that, Army. that's set. It's oh, Army. Set. It's, yeah. yeah, they will beat Army, Army because and, yeah. because Summerall is a great coach and he knows how to scheme against a triple option. I'm not saying Bryson Daly is a, a bad quarterback. He's seen Bryson Daly before. That's not that's not an issue for him. He will they will beat Army in the ACC in the American Championship game. And they will make the playoff game because they'll have to say that they have a better resume because of only only Boise State win. And look, I love Ashton Denting. I love what he's done this year. I think he is the Heisman winner, in my opinion. I don't think he is. Well, it's your opinion. They don't have a quality win, in my opinion. They don't. And and I'm saying that because. Is is like as much as I'd like to see. It's as cool as we'll be able to see a home game for playoff game in Boise. Obviously, it's not possible because it's a 12 seed. But to see the, the blue field at night in the playoff game be kind of cool to see one day. But I think they do lose a game though, Bryce. Boise State will either lose in a, in a in a weird game at Iowa at Wyoming next weekend, or they play Oregon State at the end of the season. The talk about Boise State, and I wanted to get to this because Sam wanted his thing in there. Uh, the talk about Boise State getting the four seed is ridiculous. Um, there's absolutely yeah, that's, that, that, that's that's stupid. You don't have the resume to do that. Um, Sam Kim says, and I'll just throw mine in there. I I think it'll be Boise State that gets in, but uh, I I don't think that's the best team. I think Tulane would beat Boise State head to head. Um, that, 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 and so that's where I sit with that. Uh, Sam says SEC gets four. I could, yeah, okay. Big Ten gets at least three. ACC one, Big 12 one, G5 one, Notre Dame one, unless they lose. That leaves one spot for the fourth Big Ten team or a fifth SEC team. So it's going to come down to, and Sam, in this scenario, I'm, I'm just going to imagine who is your third ACC team or your third Big Ten team? Is it Penn State or is it Indiana? 
Because if it's Penn State, the SEC team's getting in. Because Penn State has beaten nobody. I mean, like, and I know we joke about that. They've literally beaten in nobody. The case would be better for Indiana being that team left out because the, yeah, they might if they lose close to Ohio State this week, but if because they have beaten teams into submission all year long, they've at least looked stupid impressive doing those that. that. So, They're Sam, to my point, that I, that's my question to you, Sam. If you're still in the chat, who is it, Penn State or Indiana? You're having to put up against, let's just say, a Tennessee at ten and two. I don't know. Also, too, I find it very hard. Um, he goes, I get that, but the Big Ten will ride if they only get two in. Just saying, no, no, I think the Big Ten gets three in, Sam. Yeah. I'm asking, who is your fourth team? Is it Penn State or Indiana? That's what I'm asking. Uh, because I think there's – I think Indiana would have a better case as the fourth team than Penn State would. Because, because I don't even know what Penn State – Penn State's played an empty schedule. I mean, like, who who have they beaten? If you put them up against Tennessee, well, Tennessee's beaten Alabama, who would be a playoff team. They would have beaten um, Arkansas by ridiculous amounts of points. Or no, they lost Arkansas. They who did, who else did Tennessee beat? Uh, Florida. Um... Well, they would just played a harder strength of schedule. There's not an SEC team with a strength of schedule ranking outside of the top 38. I mean, Indiana has a strength of schedule ranking in the hundreds. They beat uh, Oklahoma at Oklahoma. Oh, that counts really much more. They beat Bama. Tennessee beat Bama. That's that's the big win. Who is Penn State's big win compared to that? What's Indiana's big win? That's what I'm saying. Indiana's big win is the fact that they they just beat teams fifty to seven. That's the only he's saying of? if if you're going to bring a third Big Ten team, it had to be Indiana because they. They've done what they're supposed to do, and if they lose close to Ohio State and that'd be the only loss, you have to put them in there. Sam says, by y'all's logic, Indiana and Penn State should both be left out. I don't know. I think the Big Ten is going to get three teams in. The question is, do they get four? And I don't think – I don't you know, know I, what I, I think Indiana, Indiana has to beat Ohio State on Saturday for them to get four teams. Yeah. Yeah. Safe. Because if Ohio, if Indiana loses to Ohio State, they probably gonna get left out. I mean, a win against Ohio State will cement them in the playoffs, and then and then you're regardless of what happens in the Big Ten, right? Playoffs. And then you're splitting hairs between Penn State and your Tennessee's, Texas A and M, like your Alabama, the teams that don't play for the SEC championship game. I got this for you. The loser of the SEC championship game has three losses. Should they get in? I think so. Yep. Who is it? Who's Who would be the three-loss SEC champion? Let's say it's Georgia. Georgia would have beaten Texas. And if it's Texas in the Big Ten, the SEC championship game, then – You lost the same team twice. Or you, you, lost, you, you beat the you, team. You split that. Yeah. Sorry. So, I don't think you can penalize a team for going – you can't penalize a team for going to the conference title game and losing because they reached a certain, they reached a point. Here's why you can't do it for two reasons. And will, you've been hard on this. The first reason is you can't penalize a team for achieving something that other teams couldn't and then losing because the other teams didn't get there. So they get to bypass it, which then in turn brings my second point. These media rights and TV people ain't going to let the, the the conference champ runner up because it's going to deem those games meaningless and they're going to lose out on a bunch of money. Yeah, so if that happens, there, if that happens, there will be no conference championship games. Let's read the Sam says, but you guys just said Penn State played nobody. Indiana get blown out. When what? When did I'm not saying Indiana. I'm saying Indiana's blowing teams out. So if they lose yeah. close to Ohio, okay. I don't think he's understanding what I'm saying here. Maybe we should just bring him to call on the line. If Indiana did what Michigan did last year in the regular season, they had a week regular season schedule until they played Ohio State. They beat the crap dominant. out of they beat the crap out of everybody throughout the season. Beat Ohio State at the end of the year, won their conference. They were a sheer fact to be number one in the playoffs because they beat the teams they had to do uh, all year long, senselessly, and then beat. Ohio's the, the one ranked team they had to play that was actually good on their schedule. 
it, it, it on the or at home wherever it was, beat them and then went to play the in the in the uh, Big Ten championship game and won there. They did what they're supposed to. They went out. Uh, they are they're an automatic bid. That's an easy one. But yeah, he's saying if Indiana does the same thing, but their only losses to Ohio State and they get blown out by Ohio State. They don't have a they don't have a, a win on their on the resume. Yeah, and he doesn't have a resume to be in. If if Indiana loses by thirty to Ohio State, then the Big Ten gets two teams in. in. Yeah, the Big because Ten because Indiana does not in. have the brand value. By Sam's logic of saying that Penn State doesn't deserve it, right? Yeah. And because Indiana yeah. does not have the brand value, they don't have the track record, which unfortunately means a lot. And but they've so been we, positioning Indiana on the back half of the top ten anyways. So as soon as they lose, they can drop them out. Right. Yeah. So which I which I saying. don't agree with. Sam, we understand what you're saying. We were just hoping you would understand what we were saying. I get what he was trying to say. Anthony, appreciate you. So you're saying 10 teams get in for playing in a championship game and two at-large bids. No. No. Because the SEC championship runner-up, in my opinion, will get in. And the Big 12 uh, runner-up. I don't think the Big 12 runner-up gets in. You you think the Big 12 doesn't get in? I mean, the, Big State the Big Ten runner-up. Yeah, that's what I said. You said Big Twelve. Big Twelve. Yeah, I yeah. said the Big Ten. Y'all heard Big Twelve. <laughs> Wait, hold yeah. on, Will. Well, I mean, it's well, it's fine. No, the Big Ten runner-up and the SEC runner-up will get in. The ACC runner-up is not going to get in because they're already showing you if Miami beats SMU in the ACC title game, then. SMU's already sitting out of the pack with one loss to a top 15 team. So they've, or not even before that BYU lost, BYU was in the playoff. Their only loss was to them and it was close on the road. So you, they're already telling you that. So, yes, the big eight will get in. He says, why are we still talking about this, Kevin? Because it's a talk show. Uh, the group of five and power four equals 10 teams. Def, um, no, I, I don't. The ACC and the Big Twelve are not getting their conference title game runner up runners up in, because the strength of schedule and what those t- the teams have accomplished in terms of the Big Ten and the SEC runner up is going to outweigh what those guys uh, did, as well as the teams who didn't get there, because it's harder to reach the SEC title game in the, not really harder to reach the Big Ten title game, harder to reach the SEC title game than it is to reach the ACC or the Big Twelve title game. South Carolina will represent the ACC, TriStar said. South and Carolina the reason that Ohio be. State can get in is because of the eye test. you got to watch the games. Well, that's absurd. And they lose twice to the same team. Anthony says, you said teams that play in conference championship games should get both in participation levels. Yes, I'm clarifying that I meant that teams that get into the SEC championship game and the Big Ten championship game should get particip- both participants in the playoff game. Not the ACC and the Big 12 because those conferences aren't created equally and the quality of teams are not the same. And they're already telling you that by SMU not being in the top 12 to begin with when their only loss was to a top 12 team before this weekend. Sam says that only applies to the power two. Yes. Yes. Pretty much what we've been saying for the past 45 minutes is that it's all that matters. Five SEC teams, three Big 10 teams, Notre Dame, the ACC, Big 12, group of five. I could see that happening. I could see it happening. A lot depends on what happens this week, though. If if in, and Dr. Bob said this earlier, if Indiana beats Ohio State, it's going to open the floodgates yep. for the Big Ten to get four in. Yeah. Now, if you wanted my subjective opinion, I wouldn't put. I don't know what Penn State's done outside of win games against bad competition to get into the playoff. I wouldn't put Penn State. I'd put SMU in ahead of Penn State. That's just my thought process because yep. I don't know what they've done. I, like SMU's gone on, on the road and won hard, hard games. I think – I'll say this. I think that the Big Ten is a lot weaker than people want to make it out to be. It's top-heavy, but it's pretty weak. The The big win that Penn State has is, on paper, was at USC. Where they were down 24 to, like, three at halftime. And they're terrible. I, I agree. And I'm saying on paper. That, on paper. That, that's, and then they got beat by Ohio State. And then they had a close win against Bowling Green. Tech fans know all about that. Um God, so can't live with Dan's that. gonna Dan's gonna come. Well, on. that's fine, Dan. If Dan watches this, I don't care. Sam said, "Wouldn't it anyway. be cool if State and Tennessee could play in a playing game?" God, Sam, I'm gonna disagree awesome. with you just because 
I don't want to keep expanding this thing because it's going to create more of this conversation. And well, people are going to get mad at it because we're going to have at some point, we're going to have a 2014 bracket and we're going to be arguing Kentucky against Maryland, who should be in, and nobody's going to care. because the, the men's basketball just said that he, he came out and said we have a 72 team bracket. So prepare for that. I don't mind I mean, in basketball because it's, it's, it's such what a, I said last year sport. when we talked about talking about expanding the playoff. I was like, it's irrelevant because now we're arguing, you know, if five and six, six should get in, now we're arguing should 12, 13, 14, 15 get in. It's the same argument, but with worse teams. 